the Scopes trial here in Dayton, Tennessee in 1925 started out as a publicity stunt by the town's businessmen. It went wrong when the national media seized on the story. Once the story went viral, everyone wanted to get in on the act. A controversial lawyer seized the initiative for defending Scopes. That lawyer was Clarence Darrow. Clarence Darrow was then a senior lawyer, a 65, probably one of the best known, probably at that time the best known trial lawyer in America. He had, he had sort of cut his teeth as a defender of labor unions back in the, in the really brutal days of labor organizing in the 1890s, 1880s, um, where he defended some of the most notorious uh, labor organizers, the ones that, they were heroes on the left and, and the true villains on the right. They were viewed by um, the business elite as, as virtual terrorists uh, for their activities. One of them had blown up the governor of, Illinois, uh, of I Idaho, and Clarence Darrow went in and, and defended him and got him off. And another had blown up the Los Angeles Times building, sort of that, the Los Angeles Times at the time was a, was a right-wing newspaper. And they'd blown it up and killed some people in the process, and Clarence Darrow went in and defended them. So that was the sorts of he started with. Um, then he'd evolved somewhat in his practice into really being a, a defender of in some truly sensational murder trials, very controversial murder trials that captured the nation's attention. He was a master of, of taking a case, uh, picking a jury, of making compelling arguments of why this person, whether or not they'd blown up the governor of Idaho, deserved to be set free. And he won an amazing number of these cases. And this had gotten him a tremendous reputation. His cases were followed. Now, at the same time, he was also a writer and a, and a public speaker. He had many facets to his life. He was a very complex individual. He wrote novels. He wrote, he wrote short stories. Um, he gave public speeches that would attract literally thousands because he was such a mesmerizing speaker. And one of his topics, his topics ranged on a variety of, on, 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 on socialism, on, on um, opposing capital punishment, but he also opposed, certainly opposed fundamentalism. Had a little bit of a role that would be comparable, say, to um, Richard Dawkins today as a public agnostic or, or sort of like the village atheist on the national scale. And he would ask the same sorts of questions that, that, that Richard Dawkins asks. And um, they were just as popular and sensational back then. So that was yet another aspect, plied on top of his notoriety as a, as a defense lawyer um, and his various different crusades. One of them was opposing sort of a fundamentalist brand of Christianity and trying to, uh, and certainly a crusader for anti-clericalism. That is, he tried to oppose Sunday closing laws, tried to defend birth control, tried to oppose prohibition, these various activities that he thought were religious-inspired limitations on individual freedom. And so he was a natural to oppose the anti-evolution laws, the laws being pushed for to limit the teaching of evolution in, um, in public schools. So what he did is when this trial comes up and when it's clear that it's going to be such a sensational trial, he volunteers. He had never volunteered his, his time for any case before in his life, and he was very famous. He went right to Scopes because he knew the ACLU wouldn't have him. He, he went directly to John Scopes and volunteered that he would, he would volunteer to be Scopes' defenders. Well, Scopes was... You know, he was a 25-year-old young man. Um, he'd heard of Clarence Darrow, like anyone would have heard of Clarence Darrow in America. He knew Clarence Darrow. He, Scopes' father had been a labor organizer himself, and so um, Clarence Darrow was something of a hero. He'd never heard of any of these fancy New York lawyers, and so he says, yes, sure. And so suddenly the team on the one side at the Scopes trial is going to be one of the most famous orators in America, Clarence Darrow, the, the, the Richard Dawkins of his day, the, the village atheist on a national scale, and also reputed to be the ablest trial lawyer, and backed up by a team 
of silk stocking New York ACLU lawyers on the one side, and William Jennings Bryan, the the you know the three-time nominee for president. Here you had these two people. So the result was in a decade that loved sensationalism. In this thing, you had the two most visible orators, particularly on the topic of the role of religion in public life, clashing in this small town in Tennessee. It was the stuff of, of front page news at the time. It was the stuff of celebrity then, and it would be the stuff of legend thereafter. Clarence Darrow, the man who led Scope's defense, was the most famous lawyer in the country. He was well known as a speaker and writer, a village atheist on a national scale. In many ways, the Scopes trial wasn't a conflict between science and religion. It was a conflict between two different groups of Christians. More next time. <laughs>